Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Only noobs go online without protecting their data. Don't be a noob. Protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash inside. Welcome to Inside Gaming. I'm Brian. It's weekend roundup time. Well, guys, we got some good news and some bad news about Cyberpunk 2077. The good news, after six months, it's back. On the PlayStation Store, only took several months and a million patches. The bad news, it apparently still runs really, really badly on PS4s. How do we know this? Because it's developer CD Projekt Red admitted it. So in a series of tweets this week, they announced that Cyberpunk is back on the PlayStation Store, but with a huge caveat. CD Projekt Red added, users may continue to experience some performance issues with the PS4 edition while we continue to improve stability across all platforms. Some issues. After six months, it's still got some performance issues. Don't worry, PS4. It happens to a lot of older consoles. The PS4 Pro and the PS5 versions of the game will provide the best experience on PlayStation, which obviously that makes sense because they're more powerful consoles, but it definitely adds to the impression that lots of people have that Cyberpunk was never really intended to run on base PS4s or Xbox Ones, but it was also marketed for that generation so you can see the issue. It's not to say they haven't made improvements. The most recent patch, version 1.23, has made the game more stable on base PS4s with a comparison video showing the game hitting reasonably close to an average of 30 frames per second, but they had to make a lot of reductions to get there, including pixel resolution, level of detail draw, texture fidelity, number of objects on the screen, just to name a few. And in defense of Cyberpunk, some folks on Twitter said they have had reasonably good experiences with it on the base PS4. One Twitter user, Jared Mock, said that it runs fine on my base PS4 once I turned off film grain and motion blur. He added that some textures pop in, but there's no major frame drops or crashes. Sterling K. Art on Twitter, hey, we know Sterling, shout out to Sterling, wrote that they're enjoying it, adding it's a buggy mess at times and makes my base PS4 scream, but it's still an enjoyable game. I don't know if your PS4 feels the same way, Sterling, but I'm glad you enjoyed it. Others said they are still seeing a lot of issues. Twitter user Triggered Millennial wrote that they have the base version of the PS4 and said the open world portion is simply atrocious. The missions themselves, though, are passable. I'll give it that. But going from point A to point B in the open world is just awful. So some of this might come down to just personal taste, how finicky you are and how buggy of a game you're willing to put up with. As for me, I played it on the Xbox One X. There was definitely some slowdown at parts. Uh, overall, I didn't have a huge issue with it. Bottom line though, the game just was not released in a finished state. And even now, six months later, Cyberpunk is still suboptimal on the most popular console of the most recent generation. The one that just ended a few months ago. If CD Projekt Red never intended for it to run on base PS4s or Xbox Ones, then they should have just bitten the bullet and not released it on those platforms. They should have made an announcement and said so, but they clearly weren't willing to give up all the lost sales from those gamers. So now they owe it to them, I'm sorry, to give them the best game possible given the hardware limitations. Y'all made this bed, now you gotta lie in it, sorry. All right, we're gonna get to the rest of the stories in just a second, but first guys, let's talk about Purple. The world, it's become an increasingly uncomfortable place. Texas is already super hot. It's only gonna get worse this summer. Our grid can't even handle it. But you know what? One thing I can trust to keep me cool and comfortable, my Purple mattress, a true oasis that protects me from the tiring heat and humidity of this world because only Purple has the grid, the stretchy gel material that's super supportive for your back and your legs, cushions your shoulders, and keeps you cool. Unlike the Texas grid, Purple's grid actually works. The grid bounces back as you move and shift, unlike memory foam, which remembers everything. That's why memory foam has craters and divots. You don't want that. I like the Purple pillow. It just keeps my head stabilized. I don't get those neck pricks when I get up in the morning. My whole day isn't ruined because my neck hurts that does not happen with purple you can try your purple mattress risk-free with free shippings and returns financing is available too purple really is comfort for an uncomfortable world right now you'll get 10 off any order of 200 bucks or more go to purple.com slash roundup 10 and use promo code roundup 10 that's purple.com slash roundup 10 promo code roundup 10 for 10 off any order of 200 dollars or more purple.com slash roundup 10 promo code roundup 10 Terms apply. Thank you, Purple. On to the rest of the stories. One of the marquee releases this year, of course, is Halo Infinite. It's due out this holiday season, but we haven't gotten a release date yet. Is that a bad sign? Are we going to get another delay? Because it's definitely happened before. It was supposed to come out holiday last year. That didn't happen. 
Well, Xbox boss Phil Spencer discussed this in the Dropped Frames podcast. Phil said there's not a risk of another big delay. It just sounds like they're trying to pick the best window, which means they got to consider the release dates of other games, plan around that. He said what they don't want to do is announce a date and then have to delay it another week or so. He said they are committed to releasing Halo Infinite this holiday season and said, we know kind of our range in the three to four week range. We don't have yet the exact day. There's some other things with some other game timing that we're trying to look at. We'll have better clarity over the summer, but this isn't a month's thing. This is just down to a few weeks. So that is reassuring. In the same podcast, he also mentioned he'd love to bring back the legendary fighting franchise, Killer Instinct. Hell yeah. <laughs> Nothing specific though, but he said he has had conversations about the franchise with Xbox Game Studios head Matt Booty. <laughs> Phil said, it's all about finding the right team and the right opportunity, but it's not due to any kind of lack of desire on our part that we're not doing more with Killer Instinct because we love the franchise and the community response. So there you go. It's still in there. It's still in their mind. As many studios as they own, they probably have a million franchises that they're thinking about all the time. I would like to see another Killer Instinct though. Here is an interesting tidbit about the next Dragon Age game. A data miner discovered an alpha file for Dragon Age 4 in the PlayStation Store. Hmm. This comes from Twitter account PlayStation Game Size. They regularly go through the store's database. The account recently tweeted that they found a file relating to Dragon Age 4. Their tweet said, looks like EA released a alpha version from Dragon Age 4 in July before EA Play event. A little cryptic. Does that mean that there will be a public alpha test? Eh, probably not, but it is a sign that we'll probably see something about the game at the EA Play showcase. That starts July 22nd. Obviously, it could mean that the game is entering the alpha stage of development. That would be good. It means things are happening. Hopefully we will know more next month. Nintendo once again pouring cold water on those rumors of a beefed up Switch Pro model. In a recent interview with the Washington Post, Nintendo of America President Doug Bowser was asked specifically about reports of a hardware upgrade. He said, we are always looking at technology and how technology can enhance gameplay experiences. It's not technology for technology's sake. Yeah, we know Nintendo. We know y'all don't just beef up things for their own sake. He didn't say though if there is a new hardware upgrade in the works for the Switch. The article said that his overall message was clear, new hardware will be announced when the time is right. Of course, they didn't announce a new Switch at E3. A lot of people thought that was gonna happen. It's clear they're gonna do this on their own timetable. Bowser added, it's how specifically can technology enhance a gameplay experience? Actually, it's probably like, it's how specifically can technology enhance a gameplay experience? Wait, why is that ax cutting out the bridge underneath me? Oh, I just had to do that. And then he added, then where do you apply that technology? Do you want to apply it on current existing hardware platforms or do you want to wait for the next platforms? And then what's the right gameplay experience with that? There's a host of factors that goes into it and it's something we're always looking at. So who knows? It's probably coming soon, but we have literally been saying that for years. So I don't know at this point. It's no secret that Marvel's Avengers has had somewhat of a rough go and a recent patch included a very bad new bug, the worst new bug. The patch is introducing a new boss as well as the Cosmic Cube cube event, but in addition to all that, it apparently shows your IP address on the screen and bounces around while you play. That's great. Here's where you can come and hack me. Here, no here, no here. After the patch, the game's Twitter account said, we're aware of the issue where a floating string of text appears on the screen and are investigating, but they didn't mention that that floating string of text includes your IP address. Obviously, that presents a whole host of privacy problems, so yeah, maybe don't stream Avengers with the new patch right now, all 12 of you who are thinking about it. All right, time for a five second review. Real golf, boring. Video game golf, where have you been all my life? All right, let's talk about the games coming out next week. First up, Curved Space is an intense arcade style twin stick shooter that takes the classic formula and plunges it into the weirdest reaches of space. Battle cosmic space invading spiders across curved landscapes where the bullets hug the terrain while the horizon drops sharply out of sight. It comes to PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, and Xbox One, June 29th. Destroy all humans, the cult classic returns, terrorize the people of 1950s Earth in the role of the evil alien Crypto 137. Harvest their DNA and bring down the US government 
government in the faithful remake of the legendary Alien Invasion Action Adventure. It comes to Switch June 29th. Sky, Children of Light, from the award-winning creators behind Journey and Flower, comes a groundbreaking social adventure that is set to warm your hearts. Welcome to the enchanting world of Sky, a beautifully animated kingdom waiting to be explored by you and your loved ones. It comes to Switch June 29th. Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Ghoul Patrol, the cult classic Zombies Ate My Neighbors, and its sequel make their long-awaited return in Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Ghoul Patrol. Play these classics from the golden age of 16-bit gaming with new enhancements and never-before-seen museum features. It comes to PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch June 29th. A Tale of Synapse, The Chaos Theories. Help Sai and Nero get out of a world where logic, mathematics, and puzzles will be your allies in a 2D platform game with a unique aesthetic. It comes to PC and Switch June 30th. And finally, Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. Welcome to the club. Write poems for your crush and experience the terror of school romance in this critically acclaimed psychological horror story. Oh man, this game is a trip. It comes to PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch June 30th. That's all the news I got for you this week, guys. Hope you're having a great weekend. We'll see you soon.